I'm just going to grab everything and hit verify. Verify is going to pull up the stock and jaw information that we had in stock setup. It's also pulling the models of our tools in. But notice that we can see our jaws here, but we can't actually see the chuck. Also notice if I zoom out, we have the tool, but we don't see the locator that it's actually bolted into. So in a basic turning situation like this, it's probably not a big deal. But as soon as we start looking at those milling tools that are going across on the inside like that, who knows how far the locator is sticking out here? It's impossible to tell. This is where experience comes into play. Just having an understanding of the machine and the locators that you're using and what clearances look like. Now that works fine for people who've been doing it a long time or people that have a lot of experience on that particular machine. But what happens when you bring in a new programmer? What happens when you buy a new machine, have to get a different kind of locator? That's all that much more that you need to now learn from experience as opposed to just working on the computer and getting it figured out. But I wanna show you what this looks like in simulation. Notice that we have the turret, we have all the locators for our tools, and we have our chucks as well as the jaws and the collets. It's all there. So that's really nice because especially when you start getting into tight clearance situations, you can actually see what's gonna happen on your computer before it gets to the machine shop floor. And this can save your machinist a lot of time in trying to figure out the setup for something. Let's go ahead and run the simulation. I've got it fairly slow so we can see what's happening. We got arrows that show the direction of the spindle as it's turning. Speed this up a little bit. You can see all of the movements that this is doing. It's even gonna show you the actual rotation of the turret as it changes tools. That's really cool. So we're doing a little plunge turning here. Get all that worked out. move over let's change tools again start doing some milling now this is great because we can see look how close everything is here but we know that this is going to clear because we have machine simulation to show us that all is clear i do want to note though it's important if you're going to use this to get accurate models of your locators the ones i'm using today are actually just the generic ones that are built into mastercam but make sure to get the real ones for your machine. That's very important. Okay, so the turret's moving out of the way so that we can get this spindle over here. We're gonna do a pick off, pull, cut off. So we see it move in, get to position, pull it out. Now it's gonna bring up our next tool. Gonna move into position, start up the spindle, and cut off. Now, I had to pause it right there. Did you see that flash of red? Let's move this back a few steps. This flash of red means that we had a collision. And if we go over to our collision report, we can see what happened here. We actually see our collision, and we can see the lines that it happened on. If we take a look here, we'll zoom in a little bit, we can see that we have a collision between this locator and our chuck. Now, there's a few things that we can do about this. We can stick out the tool a little bit farther from the locator, or perhaps, you know, this is the generic locator. It's not the one that I actually had for the machine. If I put in that locator, maybe it would be a different story. You can also see where this becomes really helpful if you have tools that are next to each other and one of them is doing some kind of operation and the other one starts running into JAWS you can see that stuff here before it goes to the machine so that you can reorganize your tools and get clearance for everything. All right, so let's continue on here. Let this finish up what it's doing. So that's gonna move out of the way. And now we got our last couple of ops on this side to do, and we're done.